Hey everyone, this is Andrew Ty and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm very excited to show you this incredible achievement. This is a Linux operating system running on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac bare metal. No parallels, no virtual machine, running directly on the hardware of the Apple Silicon Mac. And today I'm gonna to show you how to do this. So if you haven't subscribed already, then please consider subscribing to keep up to date with all the latest Mac gaming news. So today I'm gonna to be showing you how to install the alpha version of Asahi Linux written for the M1 Apple Silicon Mac. This is the incredible work of Hector Martin, as well as other contributors who have worked 14 months in order to bring this into the first alpha state. And just be aware that this is very much an alpha version. Most importantly, it has no GPU acceleration and no video code acceleration so it basically means that you won't be able to play videos on this at the moment so if you're thinking about the gaming applications as well I'll be talking about that at the end of the video so please make sure to watch all the way through so now we're going to dive in I'm going to show you how simple it is to go ahead and install Asahi Linux on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac so the first thing that we need to do is to make sure that we meet the system requirements so we're going to need an Apple Silicon Mac either an M1 M1 Pro or M1 Max machine, and currently the Mac Studio is excluded. Secondly, we need to make sure we're running macOS 12.3, which at the time of recording is the latest version of macOS. Thirdly, we need to have at least 53 gigabytes of space free. So if you go to About This Mac and then go to the Storage tab, then you're gonna see how much space you have left. You're gonna need at least 53 gigabytes of space. So Azahi Linux only actually uses 15 gigabytes of space, but you're gonna need more space for system updates to work. Next, we're gonna need a working internet connection so the installer is going to install 700 to 4 gigabytes of data. So the installation process is actually very simple. All we need to do is to go ahead and copy and paste or just type in this command into terminal. So I'm going to find this command, which I'm going to leave in the description. Then we're going to go to the top right hand side and then click on the magnifying glass. Then we're going to type in the word terminal and press return. So now what I'm going to do is to hold on control and then click on terminal and then I'm going to press the paste button here. And then this is the command that we're going to be pasting today. So now I'm gonna press the return key. Now it's downloading the installer and it's asking us for our password. So we're gonna type in our local Mac user password here and then press return. And now it's saying that Asahi Linux is in an alpha state and may not work for everyone. Just press enter to continue. It's asking us whether we want to enable expert mode. If you're watching this YouTube video, then I presume you're non-expert. I'm gonna press N here and press return. So next is telling us about the partitions on our computer. So we have the APFS drive and the system recovery drive. What it's asking us to do is to resize our current macOS partition to make space for Asahi Linux. I'm gonna press the R key and then press return. So now it's asking us to resize the macOS partition. Because I have 500 gigabytes, I'm gonna resize mine to 420 gigabytes. What that's gonna do is gonna give Asahi Linux 80 gigabytes to play with theoretically. So here we're gonna press return. So it's saying here that basically that new partition is gonna use 74.39 gigabytes. So that should be plenty for now. So what I'm gonna do is press the Y key here. So once the resizing is complete, it's gonna have this green line here. We're gonna press enter to continue. So now we have the free space partition, which we just resized. And then what we can do is to use the F command to install the OS into the free space. So I'm gonna press F here and press return. And now we're going to choose which version of Asahi Linux to install. So the normal recommendation is to use number one, and that's the full version of Asahi Linux. So what we wanna do here is press number one and press return. So it's asking us how much space we want to assign to Asahi Linux. I'm gonna type in the word max so that it uses all of the free space of 74.39 gigabytes and press return. So just type in the name for the OS, press return. So now it's downloading the macOS OS package info. So now it's going ahead and setting up the Asahi Linux in a new partition, and it's setting up all of the system volumes. Now it's installing the operating system. So now it's asking for our password, which I'm gonna enter now. So it'll be invisible, but it will have accepted the password. I'm gonna press return. Now it's setting the operating system as the default boot volume. So it's giving us a warning here that we need to do one more step. So I'm gonna press enter to continue. And then it's saying here that we have a set of instructions that we need to make sure that we follow very precisely. And it's basically asking us to boot into recovery mode in order to install the operating system. So here what I'm gonna do is to press enter and shut down the system. So we need to make sure that we wait 15 seconds for this computer to fully shut down. So the next thing we're gonna do is to press and hold down the power button until the entering starter options appears on the screen. So I'm just gonna do that now. I'm gonna hold this. It says continue holding for startup options. And then we're waiting for that to change. Now it's saying loading startup options and we can let go. 
So now we have the standard partition here, that's our macOS partition. And now we have the Asahi Linux partition. So in the future, when we want to switch booting between Asahi Linux and macOS, we use that same process. So now I'm gonna go ahead and press the continue button here. And then we're gonna boot into Asahi Linux. So if the macOS recovery menu does come up, what we need to do is to select our admin user, press next. And then we're gonna type in our administrator password and then press continue. And so here it's asking us to log in again. I'm gonna press continue here. So I'm gonna type in the full username of my macOS administrator, which is just Android Tsai. So it's normally the first and last name of the user when you set up macOS for the first time. I'm gonna press return. I'm gonna type in my password. That's gonna show up invisible, but I'm gonna press return again. And now it's updating the local policy. So it's asking us whether we want to set the custom boot object. I'm gonna type in Y and then press return. I'm gonna type in my username and password again and just press return. So now it's saying installation complete. I'm gonna press enter to reboot. So now we have our Grub launcher loaded up. So we have the option here in tiny writing, we can see Arch Linux or advanced options. So I'm gonna select the first line and then press return. And now we've logged into our Arch Linux setup. So what we're gonna do is the standard Linux setup here. So I'm gonna press next. Then I'll select my location and press next. Press next here. So I'm going to type in my name. Then I'm going to type in a password. So here I'm gonna press setup. And now that's all done. So now I've got access to my full Linux desktop. This is incredible because this is a full operating system running on bare metal on a MacBook Air on the new M1 Apple Silicon chips. This is the first alternate operating system that's actually usable, even though it's in an alpha state. So what's incredible is that we have a fully functioning web browser. I can go to bbc.co.uk and I can load up the homepage just fine. I can use the trackpad. I can do two finger scrolling. So, you know, that's all working. This is extremely impressive because all of these drivers, the display, the graphics, Wi-Fi, all of this had to be written from scratch. So here we're running Arch Linux ARM, KDE Plasma version 5.24.3. So what's cool as well is that the hardware keys are working too. So I can turn the volume up and down. We even have mission control working as well. And then we also have search bar. Fortunately, the microphone isn't working. We also have this brightness button too. That just turns the screen off for now. So several things are not working at the moment. We don't have DisplayPort, HDMI, Bluetooth. Most importantly, we don't have video codec acceleration. So what you find is that if you try to load up a YouTube video, it's not gonna work, but that's because we don't have GPU acceleration and we don't have video codec acceleration. So you can kind of scrub through a video, but it won't actually play for you. But overall, it's a very usable experience nonetheless. So now that we have Asahi Linux installed, what can we do with it? So unfortunately, Asahi Linux in its current state lacks a lot of the features that macOS has, and that stops us using it as a daily driver. So once GPU acceleration has been developed, then this does open up the possibility for other types of games to come on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac hardware. This is especially interesting because Linux gaming is really on the rise with the introduction of things like Proton and the Steam Deck. Linux gaming is becoming more and more mainstream. However, in terms of gaming on the M1 Mac, this is still a huge amount of production away from making that a reality. And that's because we don't have the x86-2 ARM translation or emulation at the moment. And that's really the Rosetta 2 type translation layer, which allows all of the older code, which most games are coded in at the moment, to run on M1 ARM chip. So until some kind of solution like that has been developed, which is a gigantic undertaking, we're nowhere near getting something like Proton working on the M1 Mac. However, what's really exciting about the project is that this shows that there is a demand and appetite for loading other operating systems on the M1 Mac. Hopefully we're gonna have Windows Bootcamp available in the future. Once that Microsoft and Qualcomm exclusivity deal expires, perhaps we'll get Windows ARM running natively on M1 Mac hardware. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. I've got lots of other videos like this on my YouTube channel, so please check it out. If you liked the video, please like, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.